Welcome to Ocean Sisters in Dubai, where we talk about scoop diving and ocean conservation in the UAE. In today's episode, we'll be discussing who we are and the purpose for starting this podcast. Thank you for listening. Be sure to subscribe to Ocean Sisters and leave us a review. Our podcast is available across all major platforms. If you would like more information on scuba diving trips or courses, visit Chloe Blue's website on www.chloebluescubadiving.com. Our main topic today is learning about our hosts, myself, Chloe Griffin, and myself, Elaine Froggett. Learn about how we met each other, their scuba diving journeys, and why they've decided to share their stories. Enjoy! Hi, Elaine. Hey, Chloe. How you doing? Yeah, not too bad. Our first ever podcast. I am so, so, so excited that we're actually doing this finally yeah. and um, spreading the love that we have and the passion yeah, for the ocean. For, for the ocean. It's um, unreal. Yeah. So. Uh, cool. Right. So let's just get started. Um, I think the main purpose of this is, is why did we start this podcast? I personally um, feel that um, it's there's a lot that's not known, mm. and there's a lot of education that we can pass through diving yeah. for conservation purposes. Mm-hmm. Um, also, to get over the fear of um, women diving in the UAE. Yeah. Uh, the controversial issue between the male species and the women's <laughs> species. <laughs> and you can imagine there's, pro- there's quite a lot there's of There's quite a bit the of the testosterone the going on here. Yeah. Um, but on a serious note, it's about, uh, I feel personally, that it's about introducing more women to, mm-hmm. to the scuba diving and also to uh, base in, you know, in, inform people that the UAE actually does have some really decent diving sites, which... I'm sure that we're going to touch on later on in our podcasts. Yeah, so, definitely. Um, <coughs> yeah, I think, uh, I mean, uh, the purpose of this is obviously to have a bit of a giggle, <laughs> <laughs> um, but also talk about um, the serious nature yeah. surrounding diving um, and educating, as you said, like on ocean conservation. That's yeah. really important to us. Um, and also, like, yeah, around the female aspect and just general mental health awareness as well, because... We see the ocean as being our kind of therapy tool. Almost. I absolutely love it because no one can talk to me down there, <laughs> <laughs> apart from sign signals yeah. and stuff like "You are okay? I, I think I'm fine." <laughs> yeah. So um, <laughs> we've, we've got um, we've got a lot to touch on. Yeah. So um, let's just first discuss uh, how oh, we met each other. Oh, I this think is that hilarious. is um, quite a story. <laughs> um, I think there's probably a few versions. <laughs> well, I know one version and you know one version. Yeah. <laughs> That's all that matters. So basically, I, I was teaching. I'm a, I'm a scuba diving instructor, a, a PADI certified MSCT. And um, I was on the boat, and I had a few students, and Elaine was also on the boat, and she was just going on some fun dives, I think, was it? I yeah. was doing a fun dive with uh, one of my colleagues, Mikey, yeah. and I think it was Esther and some other, yeah. Luke and some other people. Yeah, yeah. so um, <laughs> the, the first time I met her, she was, well... I mean, she was loud. <laughs> Intimidating. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, who is this girl that has. I was at the front of the boat, boat and she was at the back <laughs> with, uh, with her students trying to be professional, and I just passed my rescue course. Yeah. And I was, yeah, and um, it was pretty cool. And I was like, I don't know this woman at the back, she's too quiet. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then we got into the water. I'm probably doing like the five point descent with all my students, and I see this girl pop up, looking around and saying, do you know where my dives are? I've lost my group. (laughs) I was like, what do you mean you lost your group? (laughs) I was following a puffer fish. (laughs) Two puffer fish, actually. Two two puffer fish. And they were beautiful, and I got some very good photos. Yeah, okay, (laughs) all right. (laughs) And then you looked around for the one minute, Mm-hmm. And your buddy? Oh, I couldn't find them. Yeah. So um, I decided to ascend. 
and um, try I, to regroup. Yeah, try to regroup and come up. And then there's Chloe. I said, um, anyone seen my, my, my group? <laughs> and she said, no, but just go and join that group over there. And I was like, okay. And I shouted, oh, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> and you ended up having a really good dive. It was an amazing that. dive. We dived with Neptune and I dived with a, um, a lead guide called Mikey. Mm. And there was two other uh, DSDs on that dive. And it was absolutely beautiful. Very chilled, and I think maybe I should have... T- Just for, <laughs> our, um, for our listeners, what is a DSD? DSD is a Discover Scuba Diving um, experience where yeah. they... Um, they just get to blow bubbles for they the get first to blow time. Bubbles. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like an introduction to scuba diving. Um, so if we if we talk about DSDs, that's yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, that's how we met each other, and then um, I kind of stuck to you. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. So much so that this beautiful woman <laughs> sat to my left hand side. Um, I allowed her to mentor me through my dive mastering course, yeah. dive master course, and um, that was an absolute learning experience. Yeah, it was great. I'm still I'm alive. St- we're still learning. <laughs> <laughs> You're still alive. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, I was pushed to my limits, and uh, which I think every diver should do, because it's a, a continual learning experience. Even as a dive master, now I'm still learning. Even as an instructor, I'm still learning every yeah. single day. And I think that's, you know, that's another the point of this podcast is yeah. to kind of pass on our learnings and and yeah. hopefully get some guest speakers in and learn from them as well. Exactly. Yeah, I think that'd be amazing. Um, so, yeah. Cool. So that's how we met, and um, it's been like a, a kind of. Let's dive this We're weekend. Let's joke. dive this weekend. <laughs> Elaine, what are you doing this weekend? What are you doing this weekend? I was like, okay, I'm diving with you. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah, and we've had some experiences, which we'll... Yeah. We'll discuss later on. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's just kind of rewind um, about how we actually got involved in diving. Myself? Yeah. Um, I... This is a long time back. I learned to dive in the UK, in good old sunny, rainy Wales. That's brave. It's very brave. Um, And I learned to dive with a dive centre, Bay Divers. And it became quite apparent after my third, fourth dive, my open water dive, that um, my bottom time was just too short. So I went for my dry suit course and then it, that was a game changer. Um, we literally, it meant that I could stay a lot more down, I have more downtime, and I enjoyed my diving a lot more. And then I did my advanced open water course with uh, Tristan, who's also uh, affiliated with uh, Bay Divers. And then I kind of stuck at advanced open water for a, a good 10 years. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason why was because I was so happy being there, just logging, you know, rocking my dives up. Um, and learning and having a lot more experience. So, and then, of course, last year in the UAE, I started diving again, and, oh, it became an addiction. What brought you back diving? I just thought I missed it. I really missed it. And I thought, you know what, I can do this, and let's just go. And it was a blessing. No dry suit, no wetsuit, <laughs> warm waters, clear vis, <laughs> and actually getting to see marine life that's not just crabs and lobsters. Yeah. <laughs> a bit more diver. A bit more diver, yeah, exactly. And then I got hooked, um, and I'm so glad that I started doing it again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So... What about you? Oh Come on, Miss Chloe. Gosh, right. Well, um, so I was very fortunate. Um, my parents were into diving. They did their open water and advanced. And as soon as my brother and I turned 10 years old, um, they, uh, well, I think we were in the Maldives. I think they wanted some time alone. So they just put us on, <laughs> they put us on the diving course. So they <laughs> they got rid of you. Yeah, a minute's peace. <laughs> um so uh yeah so basically that's that's where I started um I I did my 
my open water course in the Maldives, so it couldn't have gotten any better. You're so really. lucky. Um, actually, to be fair, I did a bubble maker in, in the Red Sea when I was about eight or nine, um, but I just remember being freezing. You know what? I didn't actually enjoy it. I and that's Seriously? weird. Yeah. So my first dive, I, I really just did not enjoy it. I was just so, like, all I could think about was how cold I was. Um, but then, yeah, then I then I went to the Maldives, did my open water course. Um, honestly, I can't remember one thing about that course. Um, we were so young. Um, then. I'm an expat brat, basically. Just no <laughs> <That> comment. <laughs> um, and um, and I I moved to Indonesia <clears throat> when I was twelve, and I did my advanced course in Indo in a place called the Thousand Islands um, when I was about fourteen. So that's where I did my advanced course. I did that with my friend Alistair at the time. And that was fun. And then I did a lot of diving across Southeast Asia, um, Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia. So I did a, quite a lot of diving at quite a young age. You are so lucky. <laughs> you are so I lucky. Know. Um, <laughs> and then I moved to Dubai. And I did my rescue course when I was 16, 17 years old. Can you remember how that was? I remember doing it at... Oh, it was uh, the beach opposite Mercato Mall. It was with Al Boom. Right. Um, with Mohammed El Hani, the course director there. Now, at the time, he wasn't a course director, but mm. I'm sure he was still, um, you know, high up. Um, and what do I remember? There was, I remember being surrounded by guys. I was like a 16, 17 year old. Seriously, girl, and I was doing the rescue course with about like 40, 50 year old men. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not feel that intimidating? Um, yeah, I guess it, it was quite intimidating. And having to, like, you know, I was, I, you know, a young girl didn't have any muscle, though I still don't. Um, <laughs> blonde, I, blonde, young, young, um, yeah. and I had to pull these. 40, 50 year old men out of the sea. Well, I bet they enjoyed that. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was, it was an experience. And to be honest, um, you know, I really wanted to do my dive master right after that. Um, but I didn't realize that there was actually a junior dive master opportunity because I thought you'd have, to, you'd have to just be 18, and I wasn't 18 yet. Mm. Um, my parents really wanted me to go to university in the UK, so that's, that's what I did. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I did a bit of diving after that, but there was quite a big break. So there was about a 10-year period where That's I That's completely diving. weird, because I had the same, yeah. you had the same, and yeah. you come back and it's like, we're so yeah in love with it. I think I've always had that passion, and I wasn't going to go diving in the UK, I wasn't as brave as you. It's really cold. It's really cold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put it out there. I'm a warm water diver. <laughs> it's really, really cold. Hence, dry suit. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, the the passion's always been there. Um, I went into marketing, so I did a business and marketing degree. I then went and did event marketing, so organising big, large scale exhibition and conferences, um, and then. My life kind of did a bit of a U-turn, and I was like, you know what? I re- I've always, always, always wanted to be a scuba diving instructor. Yeah. I mean, when I was younger, I was like, oh yeah, half the year I'll be a ski instructor, half a year I'll be a scuba <laughs> diving instructor. You know, I always had that in my head. I still haven't done the skiing instru- instructor <laughs> yet. <laughs> Are you going? <laughs> Probably not, <laughs> to be honest. Um, <coughs> diving has now taken over. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I went, um, did my dive master, and then went to Thailand and did my instructor course in Koh Tao, which is quite a popular destination to kind of pursue that. Well done. And um, I did that with Simple Life, and it was great. It was it was really, um, you know, I think I think the course director makes a, a really big big difference. So basically. Um, to get certified as an instructor, you have to um, go through a course director, so the level, a few levels above an, an instructor. 
and they guide you um, through through that course and through that examination process. Um, so yeah, so now I've been instructing for three three years now. Wow. Yeah, and I've I, got all this to come, see. So yeah. I'm, the, I'm, I'm sat here opposite <laughs> you, and we talk on the boat uh, every single day. We talk on the boat that we're there diving. Yeah. But we never talk about this. Yeah. And I've got all this to come. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, it's. Uh, it's crazy, but, um, you know, I really enjoy it. Um, at the time, obviously, I had a bit of a, a year break during that instruct because we had that COVID situation. Mm, and I don't. <laughs> so, yeah, um, so that took a, you know, as soon as I passed my instructor course, I wanted to go out and teach people, and then all of a sudden I was like... Bruh. You can't. Can't. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so it, it gave me time to kind of think about what I wanted to do anyway and just to reflect, and I think a lot of people experience that kind of downtime, which actually probably was quite good for the world, just to kind of... Reflect. Reflect. Yeah. Um, and then decided, you know what, I want to, you know, actually do this. Uh, you know, at the time I was thinking, you know, I'll still go back into marketing, I'll do the instructing on the side, but actually um, it's kind of been the opposite. I've kind of decided to, to take the instruction so further. So if you don't mind me asking, business, yeah, yeah. what actually made you not be like all the other IDC candidates that have passed, not go and work for a, like a, a DC, a dive centre, what made you set up Chloe Blue Scuba Divers? Um, yeah, good question. I think it was... I mean, to, to be honest, I, I experienced, like, I've, I've been freelancing at a few of the dive centres, so I kind of got familiar with the routine and everything like that. Um, honestly, I, you know, I like doing things my way and... <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Strictly, no comment. Um, <laughs> no, you know, I, I can't I've say just, anything to I've, that. I've got, you know, I, I want to do things, you know, the... Uh, I don't want to say proper. A proper. The proper way. No. <laughs> That's really poor English. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. I, I mean, to be honest, I, it was. It just was. It worked through my schedule a lot better. I wanted the flexibility. Yeah. Um, you know, I do still want to continue doing a bit of marketing when I can, a bit of freelancing. So, to be honest, working at a dive centre, we've got to work six days a week with one day rest. It w- it that didn't really fit do you not find that it kind of kills the passion i think so it definitely kills the passion i think you know i still i'm still in love with diving and i think that's because um i I have that flexibility where you know i work maybe three four times a week but she does Um, more than that though (laughs) because behind the scenes she's got me nagging and do this do that <laughs> so, okay, Elaine, I'm get on. I'm on it. I'm on, I'm on it. it. Okay, I'm on okay, it. okay, good girl. Um, yeah. So yeah, nice so yeah, so I, th- I think it's it's that it's the flexibility. Yeah. And also, yeah, I like doing it um, my way as well. Yeah, it's good. I like the fact that you're a female diver. And yeah. You're a female dive instructor, and after like doing my dive master with you, uh, and having you behind my back, helping me with RDPs, even to the extent where. I even had her beautiful dog helping me do RDPs. <laughs> We'd write it on the board, the, the <laughs> graphs, and she'd be like, question mark here, question mark here. And before I'd had time to kind of look at the, the table, um, Harry had kind of done his little smudging work. I was like, well, what was that supposed to be? <laughs> he was like, screw RDP. <laughs> Get a dive computer. <laughs> ha- Harry, by the way, was when I was doing my DM, was literally about what this big. Oh, it, it, was, how big tiny. Is it? it was tiny. It was tiny. And now um, he's oh. he, he's a dachshund, so he's a miniature dachshund. Um, and he has just grown in length. And he doesn't. He, d- he used to fit in my handbag, and now he doesn't, which is quite upsetting. But he, he helped me do my um, yeah, my RDP. So, yeah. But I just think it's amazing that there's another female um, Patty MSDT out mm-hmm. there that is promoting her own business and driving the diving industry. Uh, and oh, that's so sweet. I also, no, it's not. It's true. It, and the fact is, as well, I've seen you... Um, I find it quite funny because I call them, I call Chloe's students little ducklings. It's quite <laughs> hilarious. I drop down and she's like, Elaine, go down. I'll wait. Okay, cool. And then all you suddenly see is Chloe coming down and then she's looking back up the line 
And then all these little ducklings <laughs> come out, and she's like, "You okay? You okay?" <laughs> and I'm like, Aww. "Oh, she's getting her ducklings all in a little row." And, and then, then she's like, "You buddy, you buddy, <laughs> <to> swans, swans." <laughs> swans. <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. Swans. Yeah, beautiful swans. Mm, no uh, comment. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. cool. So, I mean, I think a lot of our listeners will be like, UAE as a diving destination, mm, I've never heard of it on the on the diving map. <laughs> I'm going to be quite honest, I never did. No. I never did. And, no, it's um, not, it's not um, in, on the books much. And... I tell you, it's just a hidden dream here because we've got so much, literally. So we live in Dubai. Mm. Um, you've got Abu Dhabi on your left hand side, if you look at the, if we're facing out, and then we've got um, Hassab up the top, mm-hmm. which is absolutely beautiful. Um, I've had several drift dives up there with you, mm-hmm. and um, we've seen some incredible marine life. And there's also, I think, there's a a whale shark that hangs around up there as well. I haven't had the privilege of seeing it. No, I think we're both quite unlucky. Aren't I know, exactly. So I think they know we're coming because yeah, they can hear us. They can hear us, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I spoke oh, to someone the other day <laughs> on the dive boat and um, it took them seven years to, to finally spot a Fine. whale shark. But I will so. say something to you. that The turtle reserve here in Dubai, they've tracked their turtles and when we were in Hassab, mm-hmm. one of the turtles was all the way up in Hassab. So I was like, that is just awesome. They're swimmers. They're swimmers, exactly. Mm-hmm. So we've got Hassab on the left. At, so Which is in the Oman. So in the Oman top, that's yeah. That's not in the UAE, it's the UAE, but it's just like across the border, about yeah. half an hour across the border. So it's, it's very easy to get to and you can do it in a day as well. It takes probably just like a two hour Two drive. hour journey. It's beautiful. It's very scenic. Mm. And then the other side, we've got good old Fujairah, Khufakan, Deba. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we've got our Dibba, famous Dibba Rock where there's um, reef sharks there. Yep. There's and a lot of black tips. I was absolutely uh, privileged the other, like last week, two weeks ago. Um, I led a dive because Chloe was sunning it up in England. <laughs> No there comment. Was a, there was actually sun. <laughs> there was actually sun. <laughs> she went over for the heat wave. I was <laughs> like, dude, seriously. <laughs> um, no, on a serious night. So I led two two dives, uh, one around artificial reef. And like I've learned my ID on stingrays has kind of gone through the roof because I saw a cow um, stingray and then two other grey ones, which I can't quite identify because I couldn't see them properly from yeah, their markings. I, I think they were mobular. Maybe. Yeah. So that was on Artificial Reef. Then we had, on Artificial Reef, we had uh, the clownfish. Um, We had um, uh, good old moray eels. I hate them. (laughs) You hate morays. Probably, yeah. Uh, A good old puffer fish (laughs) and uh, just the normal stuff, batfish and stuff. And then, lucky enough, we went round to Dibba on a second dive. And I was looking for something in particular, but I'm not going to tell listeners what we were looking for. Because it gives the game away. Uh, and then I found this amazing, beautiful black stingray. Mm, it's amazing when that happens. It was so... And it was right then for dive. And Chloe was like, Elaine, this is your dive brief. Mm. 50 minutes or 50 bar, whichever you hit first. Yeah. And then we saw the stingray. And I was like, oh... <laughs> coming to the end so yeah so we were like okay okay guys are we still okay to stay like, everyone I check, how much air have you got mm. and I'm checking okay so you're good you're good okay so we and no NDL going on here so we're okay so I was like okay so I think we did 60 minutes yeah. I'm waiting for a telly <laughs> off here <laughs> now you tell me <laughs> but it was a beautiful dive and I went with um uh <laughs> seven male species yeah. <laughs> I was the only female on the boat and um, two of those were two junior open waters yeah which is awesome to dive with junior open waters they just get so excited with yeah absolutely everything <laughs> and it's like they go back to school and they're like oh we were diving with a stingray and they're yeah. like what you know people go to the aquariums here and stuff but to see them in their natural habitat is just unbelievable yeah. you know yeah and it's I just really felt so special. blessed. I felt so blessed that I was actually there. So um, so back to diving in the UAE, there's so many dive spots. There are. There's loads of dive spots. Um, I think we're quite lucky here in terms of the tropical marine life. We, we do have a lot, as you mentioned. We've got the mores. We've got the 
puffer fish, we've got the stingrays. If you're really lucky, um, then we've got um, the uh, whale sharks and, yeah. So yeah, the there's, reef, there's sharks, yeah. reef sharks. So, I mean, yeah, there, there's definitely a lot. I think the thing that lets um, the UAE down slightly compared to... Um, like if you're comparing it to the Red Sea or Maldives, is the visibility is. Oh. Um, yeah, we forgot to mention. Now you mentioned about visibility. Yeah. So you can actually dive in Dubai. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've gone all the way around, but not actually in Dubai. In Dubai, there's um three wrecks at the moment that I know of, mm-hmm. and the visibility is very hit and miss. Yeah, you have. I mean, when it's a good day, it's probably about five, eight meters. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, on a bad day, well, it's on a bad day, we're just touching each other. Yeah. <laughs> Not are inappropriately, there, I'd there, like to add, but we we like <laughs> don't go off. <laughs> um, so yeah, in Dubai, it's definitely um, well, it's 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 quite difficult circumstances. Um, if you're just doing like a shore dive in Dubai, there are actually seahorses, um, stingrays, cuttlefish. But um, yeah, it's just the visibility. I mean, it's normally quite calm, the sea. Um, it's just um, maybe, I think it's the, the construction work and um, the you have You have forgotten one major thing about the sea here. Well, go on. It's Salt. so salty. Salty, yeah. It's so super salty. How many weights do I have? <laughs> like, <laughs> Chloe, have you got an extra two dead, pounds? Dead there? sea salt. <laughs> <laughs> salty. No, it's not. Yeah, it's 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 quite. Um, there's there's a big difference to um, the coast in Dubai compared to Fujairah, and also the the water temperature as well. So, mm. for example, um, in Dubai, I think because it is quite still the water um you don't get that flow of water and it when it's summertime it's like 33 it's degrees like a it's, bath. it's a, yeah it's a warm bath um and in fajera you've got um the coast is connected to the indian ocean so there's a lot more flow mm. going on um so you can see that the water temperature remains you know um, oh, there's only a little bit of change. A little bit of change. Between, Unlike Zainab, yeah. I think the first time we dived, well, we tried to dive Zainab together. That's another story. Yeah. <laughs> I dropped down and it's nice and cool. And then all of a sudden it's like, jeez, this is so hot down here. Yeah. And I think it was like 34, 32, 34. And there was a nice thermal climb down there. And yeah. then well, the first time we like we dived Zainab together, we didn't actually find Zainab. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't find Zainab. <laughs> that, that's another we story. Did, uh, but um, And then the second time we'd find it. We did, yeah. Yeah, because I told we you where with, it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe me? <laughs> yeah, we've had a lot of interesting dives into nowhere. Um, but they've all been experiences. <laughs> <laughs> that, I think that, that first dive that we did try to do, well, we tried to do Zainab was with um, Rania. Yes. Who's also another female instructor. Yeah. And I was a rescue diver and I bought a brand new SMB. Yeah. <laughs> that nearly killed me. <laughs> well, yeah. it didn't. Um, but yeah, I had you were, you were, yeah. I had a bit of issue with it. The SMBs, it is hard. So the SMB is a surfer marker boy. Boy, yeah. Um, and basically it lets, um, so you, you, you inflate it, it goes up. And it lets boats know um, that you're ascending, yeah. so they don't come into you. Well, it let a boat know I, I was <laughs> ascending, <laughs> literally. Um, and, it, and it is hard. I mean, you you do need to practice it quite a few times to get to get it right. I mean, I mean, this is where our friendship has really developed because how many times have you caught my SMB? Yeah, the the real. Well, the real. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We've played underwater hockey with my real. <laughs> um, Esther, you'll probably get to meet Esther at one point. But um, 
she's caught my reel yeah, at one point and then another point we but no, dropped. But no, now you've mastered it. <laughs> now I feel oh, like you've I certainly have mastered it. it. I made sure I did because I can't be a dive master without doing In fact, doing I think we're going to have to put it on our Instagram, your, uh, your SMB uh, attempts. Really? Yeah. It's <laughs> no, so I'm embarrassing. Disgusting. I'm so embarrassing. <laughs> but seriously, I just... Do you know what? It's like, let's see what we can take the mickey out of the lane. GPS tracker, oh SMB. Yeah. What else is there? There's quite a few bits. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know. Um, oh, no. Your hair. Um, <gasps> when uh, I was basically I was teaching a rescue course... <laughs> And Elaine came to be the... I'm always her victim. Victim. And um, instead of them inflating the... To the inflator <laughs> hose. the inflator hose. <laughs> um, they were, like, yanking on her hair. And if you, if you look at her hair, she's got this lovely, beautiful, dark... It's actually cut. It's short now. ...hair. But um, which can easily be mistaken as, as um, an, inflator an inflator hose. And I'm just so. sat there doing this, nodding to the left hand <laughs> yeah. side. And Chloe's like, What's. G-? And he's pulling my hair. It was so funny. I uh, did. Wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, cool. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, in the UAE, there's, as we said, there's, there's loads of beautiful um, destinations to, to visit. Um, and also um, in Oman, which is yeah just a two-hour drive away, we've got the Musandan side and Kasab. So yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's all good. It's pretty good. I mean, then as well, just like the other day, we were diving. Um, you didn't dive it. Um, again, another my dive buddy Nick. Uh, you guys are gonna meet him because he's an awesome, awesome photographer. We um, we went out last weekend and we dived um, a brand new dive site. So they're actually finding new dive sites all the time. And this one was absolutely stunning, uh, straight down to 30 metres. Mm-hmm. And, um, oh, yeah, epic. And then, um, again, surface interval and then back to another one as, as another, another dive as well. So it was pretty good. But it's like there's, you have your standard dive, set, dive sites here for your levels that you want to be at. And then you can progress. There's no... Yeah. And I think you did your uh, deep, uh, that side as well? Yeah. Um, I did my deep speciality instructor course. Um, mm. I did that at... I want to say broccoli, but it's called cauliflower. <laughs> <laughs> broccoli and cauliflower. They're two different vegetables. Which one are you on about? <laughs> the cauliflower roof. Um, which is a 40 meter dive and then I did the crystal maze um, right after uh, mm. it's 30 meter so yeah it's crystal uh, maze is beautiful because it's literally just in the middle of nowhere yeah and I think they yes. found it just by accident I think yeah I mean it looks like it was placed there mm. um, maybe by a diver years and years ago the marine life on it is so unreal yeah. because there's seahorses there and they're really really like they're not tiny ones they're quite big seahorses yeah. so it's yeah, pretty we, good we get some yeah. giant seahorses here um, yeah they're not like the kind of they're not the typical ones not typical ones. <laughs> no, not they typical. look like um they they're like, what? Something. It's like they're on testos- testosterone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. They're big, massive seahorses. I'm serious. Yeah, they are. So. They're humongous. Anyway. Um. <laughs> but you go to like where we d- in Dubai for the seahorses and they're so tiny. Yeah, they're like officers. It's like they're just unbelievable and you really have to look for them. But if you go to the other side, you, just, yeah. you don't have to look for them. They're there in your face. Uh, yeah. Um, so and, and we'll we'll also show you the seahorses on our on our Instagram. So our Instagram is Ocean Sisters UAE. Yep. We have literally just launched it yesterday. Yep. Um, <laughs> so we've got <laughs> how many followers? Five. <laughs> no, we've actually got about twenty now because oh. I was so busy add 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 oh, add, and then people were liking the post because obviously the tagging, the hashtagging worked, oh. and um, so I followed them back, and yeah. it's pretty good stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Cool. So we've so got um, we've got twenty followers. So at the moment, I think you know. Yeah. Please make it twenty-one <laughs> if you can. <laughs> She's always like, please make it just one more. Just one more. Just one more. One more. Um, yeah. And yeah, so our next episode is going to be focused on female diving. Female in the diving. UAE. I think it's quite important because a lot of ladies here, um, that especially that are covered, um, have this fear that it's not acceptable to dive. 
Um, mm. Let me just say that it is acceptable. And with companies like Nike and Adidas um, and other scuba um, suppliers, they're actually making now the, the long sleeve covered uh, mm. and the, the head covering. So that's pretty good. Yeah. So... Yeah, definitely. I think now more, um, you know, we've, we've seen like Aqualung, Scoop Pro, they've all yep. got female lines. Um, and it's not just pink stuff. There are actually <laughs> um, branching out into other colours for yep. women, um, which is great. Um, so, yeah, so I think next. I next. think it's a discussion that needs to be said yeah. um, so that we can promote for female divers. Watch out, guys. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say. Watch out. The women are going to take over this world. <laughs> I'm not sexist by any chance, but it's, it's. I think they're just do, it's an equality that I would like, uh, you know, for the other women to, to be introduced to and experience what we are so lucky. And I think sometimes we take it for granted, but um, I just feel like we can share this. Yeah, definitely. This amazing experience. So, cool. awesome. Awesome. All right. I think that's a wrap. I think so. All right. See you next episode. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Ocean Sisters podcast with your hosts, Chloe Griffin and Elaine Froggart. We hope you enjoyed our first ever podcast. If you'd like to hear about specific topics or have a suggestion for a guest speaker, please follow us on Instagram, Ocean Sisters UAE, and send us a DM. Join us next week as we'll be discussing a female's perspective of diving in the UAE. That's all for this episode. See you next time. Bye. Bye.